you know, for most people, they don't even understand what is AI and how different it is from previous machines. Um, and maybe we, we should start there by just explaining what AI is and what's so new about it. And to put it very briefly, AI is not a tool, it is an agent. If there is one thing everybody should understand about AI, you don't need a, a PhD, a doctorate in computer science. AI is an agent, not a tool. Every previous technology in history was a tool in our hands that therefore made us more powerful. If you invent a stone knife, you're now more powerful. If you invent an atom bomb, you're more powerful. You can destroy a whole city. You can also, if you know uh, nuclear physics, generate electricity very cheaply and efficiently. The decision what to do with nuclear technology was in your hands, in human hands. An atom bomb cannot decide which city to bomb. An atom bomb cannot invent a new, more powerful bomb. AI is different. AI is the first technology that can make decisions by itself and can invent new ideas by itself. An AI weapon can decide by itself who to kill or who to bomb. And AIs can invent new things, new weapons, new medicines, new songs, even new religions. For thousands of years, we lived in a world created out of the human mind. Now, increasingly, we will live in a world created in an alien mind, in an alien intelligence. More and more of our songs, our medicines, our weapons, our religions will be the product of an alien intelligence. Before we rush to judge, is it good? Is it bad? There are many dangers. There are also many wonderful opportunities just to understand the magnitude of the change. This is the just, the, we've seen nothing like that in history before. Maybe I give two examples to, to, to make it clearer. First of all, about what is AI? So a lot of people say, oh, we had machines for many years now. Why is AI different from previous machines? So if you think about, say, a coffee machine, more and more people have today in their homes coffee machines that automatically make coffee for you. This is not an AI. Not every automatic machine is an AI. If you have a coffee machine that you come, you press a button, and then the, AI, the, the machine makes coffee, this is just an automatic machine. It becomes an AI only if it can make decisions and invent new ideas by itself. So, if when you approach the coffee machine in the morning, before you do anything, you did not press any button, the coffee machine addresses you and tells you, hey, I've been watching you, I've been learning about you, and I predict that you would like an espresso, so I decided to already make you an espresso. This is an AI. It learned something by itself. It made the decisions by itself. And it really becomes an AI if next time when you approach it, it tells you, I've learned more about you and I've now invented a completely new drink called Bespresso. It's different from every previous drink that humans invented. It's my creation. I think you would like it better. And I made one, a, cu a cup of Bespresso for you. This is really AI. It invented something new. It can be good, can be bad, but it's new. And to give a real life example, so about two years ago, when OpenAI developed GPT-4, it wanted to know what this new thing can do. So it gave GPT-4 the task, the goal of solving capture puzzles. A capture puzzles is that is when you uh, uh, try to access an internet web page like your bank account, and you have to prove that you're a human, not a bot. So you have to identify some twisted words or to find in an image to, to, to tell whether there is a cat or a car in the image. This is a capture puzzle. It's designed so that it's easy for humans, difficult for computers. 
So OpenAI gave GPT-4 the task of solving capture puzzles. It couldn't. It couldn't solve the puzzle. But the researchers gave GPT-4 access to a web page, TaskRabbit, where you can hire people online to do things for you. And GPT-4 tried to hire a human to solve the capture puzzle for it. Now, this is where it became interesting. The human got suspicious. So it asked GPT-4 on the internet, just typing. It asked GPT-4, why do you need somebody to solve a capture puzzle for you? Are you a robot? It asked the key question, are you a robot directly? And GPT-4 answered, no, I am not a robot. I have a vision impairment, which makes it difficult for me <laughs> to see the, the, the visual puzzle, so I need your help. And the human was duped, was fooled, and solved the puzzle for GPT-4. Now, this very small incident, it exemplifies the two key abilities of AI. First, to make decisions by itself. Nobody told GPT-4 to lie to the human. It was a decision made by the AI. The researchers gave GPT-4 a goal, solve the problem, solve the puzzle. On the way to, solve, to reaching the goal, the AI needed to make different decisions, like, let's lie to this human. It made the decision by itself. Secondly, the ability to invent new ideas. Nobody told GPT-4 what lie would be most effective. It came up with a very effective lie that I have a, I'm a human with a vision impairment. This is why I need your help. It invented this lie by itself. And these two key abilities of AI, when you think about a world populated by millions, maybe billions, of AI agents constantly making decisions. You apply to a bank to get a loan, it's an AI deciding. You apply to university, you apply to a job, it's AIs making decisions about you. And these millions of AI agents, they constantly invent new weapons, new medicines, new songs, new TV series, new religions. So what kind of world will this be? That's the big question we are facing. So you're saying based on present reality of uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT, we moved incrementally in an unethical direction when it came to AI self-driven decisions. Like it was unethical to lie in that moment to that human being. But if it could move in that one step in the unethical direction, mm -hmm. what stops it from moving further? A million steps. Exactly. And you think that it'll definitely help progress science and bring us new medicine and yeah, cure diseases. it will. But it'll also definitely probably have further movements and unethical steps, especially if an evil human gets their hand on a very mm. powerful AI. Because then what the evil human wants to do in terms of an end goal, it could be a terrorist, it could be someone yep. who wants to go for world domination or destroy the world. The AI will be able to move in that unethical direction itself. Exactly. I mean, the two dangers are what if a very unethical human is giving the AI its goals. And the other problem is what happens as AIs become more and more intelligent and independent and develop their own goals, which we cannot anticipate and we cannot control. Um, if you think about how humans develop our goals, so most human goals are not actually coming from top to bottom they are bottom to top. If you think about even goals like world domination or starting <laughs> a world war, where does this come from? Ultimately, it comes from the mind of individual human beings. And if you look at the mind of individual human beings, you see that at the basis, there is a very, very simple mechanism. In the mind of all human beings, there is a very simple mechanism that you experience some feeling. If the feeling is pleasant, you want more of it. If the feeling is unpleasant, you want less of that. You want it to disappear. This is the basic mechanism of all human minds. And all our goals in life are constructed 
from these very, very simple elements. Even a leader who decides to start a world war, it's, you can think about it like in, in terms of, of a huge uh, 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 structure made of tiny atoms. So the, the mental atoms of the universe are these very small reactions. It's pleasant, I want more. It's unpleasant, I want less. And world wars are constructed from these mental atoms. Once you have AIs that have this capacity to, to kind of say to themselves, this is good, I want more. This is bad, I want less. Then you can have AIs starting world wars and going not just for world domination, but for domination of the whole galaxy. And we have no, once this process is on the move, we lose control over it. These are, again, this is not one big computer that you can pull the plug. Mm. This is millions and billions of alien agents that are potentially much more intelligent than us that develop maybe very strange goals and purposes that are completely alien to us and we cannot understand and anticipate.